Welcome back to Recap Chronicles. Today, I'm going to explain a 2022 mystery thriller film titled Enola Holmes. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with Enola Holmes running from the local police. As she gets to an alleyway, she addresses the viewers and takes them back to how she got herself into this situation. Since her last adventure, Enola has started her own detective agency, but she has not been able to escape the shadow of her more famous brother Sherlock. Their mother, Eudoria, is also still on the run, while Tewksbury is continuing his crusade for reform in England, and although Enola misses him, she says she has no time for distractions. Enola is visited by a young girl named Bessie, who asks her to locate her missing foster sister, Sarah Chapman. Bessie brings Enola to her home, next to a match factory where orphan girls are being forced to work. Enola meets May, an older, more abrasive girl that isn't happy with Bessie going to her for help over Sarah. Enola looks for clues around the girl's room and comes across a paper that says 12th of March, believing it to be a date. Bessie also informs Enola that Sarah had gotten into an argument with the factory's foreman, Mr. Crouch, who says Sarah was stealing something from his office. Enola follows Bessie to the match factory to pose as a new worker. She creates a diversion to sneak into Crouch's office, where she sees the factory owners, Henry and Hilda Leone, plus their son William, in a meeting along with Treasury Minister Lord Charles McIntyre and his secretary Mira Troy. Enola finds a book with pages that Sarah tore out and took with her. She also finds old matches that had red tips instead of the white ones the girls work with. At night, Enola follows May to the Paragon Theatre, where May works a second job as a stage performer with a troupe of other women. When Enola goes investigating in the dressing room, May confronts her with a knife, but she doesn't give Enola any information she wants about what Sarah was doing in Crouch's office. However, she does manage to bribe the stage manager into talking, as Sarah also worked there and was involved with a mysterious man. The manager gives Enola a poem that Sarah received. As Enola walks alone, she is followed by a man with a cane. She walks faster until she runs into Sherlock being thrown out of a pub, as he is too drunk to stand on his own and requires Enola's help to get home. After bringing Sherlock back to his home, Enola sees a board in his office over his latest case that has him stumped. In the morning, Sherlock deduces that Enola was working in the match factory due to the residue under her fingernails and he becomes concerned that she is in danger. Enola leaves and later runs into Tewksbury in the park, where it's clear they still have feelings for one another. She then reviews the poem again and finds that it's a coded message that reveals a location in Whitechapel. Enola arrives at the address and finds signs of a struggle. She then comes across May, dying from a stab wound. Despite her efforts to help, May doesn't make it. On her person, Enola discovers sheet music titled The Truth of the Gods and Quat. She is then found by Inspector Lestrade, Adil Akhtar, who shows up with Superintendent Grail, David Thulis, the man that was following Enola the night before. Grail accuses Enola of killing May, and when he continues to question her, she kicks him in the groin and makes a run for it, leading to the opening scene where she's being chased by cops. She escapes and ends up hiding at Sherlock's place again, just after Lestrade had paid him a visit. Enola questions him about his current case, and Sherlock admits it involves bribery and blackmail among government officials, but he cannot deduce the source of these crimes. When she brings him her findings, Sherlock decides to solve the Sarah case as well and urges Enola not to let her personal feelings get involved. While both home siblings look for clues, Sherlock goes to the apartment where May was murdered, and Enola finds clues based on the names of flowers. Poppy was mentioned in the poem, and she finds the name Sweet William and Quat. Enola finds out a ball is taking place where she may find Sarah's lover, so she goes undercover. When she tries to speak to the Lion's family, she is turned away for speaking without a chaperone. Enola ends up meeting Mira, who is kind to her and gives her a fan to impress the other guests. She runs into Tewksbury and asks for his help in learning to dance. Upon further inspection, she finds that Sweet William refers to none other than William Lyon. She dances with him to try and get more information on Sarah, but William tells her people are watching them. At the same time, Tewksbury dances with another girl Enola met named Cicely, Hannah Dodd. Meanwhile, Sherlock deduces that his clues have led him to decipher a message, good to meet you, Sherlock Holmes, as well as finding a name from the account numbers he gathered, Moriarty. Enola is arrested at the ball in front of everyone and brought in for questioning by Grail. He tells her not to get involved any further in Sarah's case, leading Enola to realize he is working for someone bigger. Sherlock goes to bail Enola out, but Grail attempts to hold her on as supposed evidence. Sherlock hits back with his own findings from the crime scene, figuring that one of the guards at the station might have been involved in May's murder and seemingly figuring Grail's own involvement. Sherlock has no choice but to go to Eudoria and Edith for help, as Enola is being escorted to a women's prison. The ladies stage a breakout and take Enola with them. On the ride out, the ladies use smoke bombs to get the pursuing guards off their tails. 
Anola talks to Eudoria about the case, having learned that the match girls at the factory were dying from what is allegedly typhus. Grail pursues and causes the ladies to crash their carriage. He attempts to have all three arrested, but they kick the guards' butts and get away again. Anola then tearfully parts ways with Eudoria again so that she may complete her mission. Anola returns to Bessie and finds nearby flower pots containing traces of red and white matchstick tips. She figures that the white tips contain phosphorus, which is the actual cause of death for the girls at the factory. Anola goes to Tewksbury for help but has to hide when Sicily shows up, as she was already working with Tewksbury on the case. Anola slowly realizes that Sicily is really Sarah and that William was her secret lover. Before they head out to continue to solve the case, Anola and Tewksbury admit their love for one another. Anola and Tewksbury go to the factory, where Anola encounters Sherlock. He tells her that their two cases are connected, and he has found reason to prove her innocence in May's murder. They find William dead in a chair, having been murdered as well. Anola finds clues suggesting Lord McIntyre had been conspiring with William's father, saving money by replacing the match tips with the cheap phosphorus that's been killing the girls. Using more clues from the sheet music, the siblings and Tewksbury figure that they are being led to the Paragon Theater. The heroes meet Sarah at the theater, where Anola has to break the news of William's death to her. Sarah has a list of the girls who were killed by the phosphorus to make sure they receive justice. They are found by Grail and his goons, with Grail holding Bessie with a knife to her throat. Bessie bites his hand and runs free, leading to a fight between the heroes and villains. Sherlock and Tewksbury fight the goons while Anola is chased by Grail. In the fight, Anola uses a hook to ensnare Grail by the groin and pull him upward, causing him to smash his head and break his neck against a wooden beam before he falls down dead. McIntyre and his own goons show up with Lestrade, and he orders for Sarah to be arrested. Anola and Sherlock then gather all their information and conclude that the mastermind behind everything was Mira, aka Moriarty. She attempted to blackmail McIntyre and the Lions, but things got complicated when William stole their contract, and she hired Grail to help cover her tracks, which led to May and William getting killed for getting too close to exposing them. Lestrade arrests Moriarty, but McIntyre burns the list of girls' names to save his own skin. Anola returns with Bessie and Sarah to the factory, where they expose the girls' deaths and lead a revolt against Crouch and the other employers. The girls all walk out in protest, which Eudoria and Edith watch and know that Anola is responsible. Sherlock visits Anola and presents her with a newspaper saying that Tewksbury has helped gather enough evidence to have McIntyre arrested. While Sherlock offers her a partnership, Anola declines but agrees they should meet every Thursday at 4. As she leaves, Sherlock is met by Edith, who gives him a newspaper that shows that Moriarty has escaped custody and is on the loose. Anola then goes out on a date with Tewksbury. During the credits, a man shows up to Sherlock's home to answer an ad for a flatmate, Anola's idea. Despite some hesitance, Sherlock invites the man in. When asked his name, the man replies Dr. Dr. John Watson. Quat. 